Hey everyone, if you've been around for a while, you know that I talk a lot about the social security filing decision. Do you file earlier or file later? And how each person has to weigh out the facts and circumstances that are specific to them when making this decision. The truth is there are benefits to filing early and benefits to filing later. And the inverse is also true where there are risks to filing early and those risks to filing later. But today, I want to talk about one of the risks of filing later, and that's the sequence of returns risk. This is the risk that you retire and start taking your income from only your savings as opposed to your savings and Social Security, and your portfolio returns are negative for part or all of that period. This would put you in a position where, in addition to the money you are taking out of your savings to live on, negative market returns are taking some away as well. These two things together can drive down the portfolio value and make it very hard to recover. Now, one of the reasons that it can be hard to recover is due to the loss recovery rule that highlights the fact that the percentage gain required to recover from a loss increases as the size of a loss grows. So for example, if you lose 10% of your portfolio's value, you need to make an 11.1% return on the remaining investment that you have just to get back to even. If that loss is 20% of your value, you need to make a 25% return on what you have left to get back to even. And if you lose 50% of your value, you need to make a 100% return to get back to even. So if you're taking out some and a declining market is taking some out, this is increasing the percentage that you have to earn just to get back to square one. And with that background, this is where the sequence of returns risk starts to play havoc with those who have elected to file for Social Security later. And I'm going to show you some examples in just a moment. But first, let me lay out some groundwork and talk about the sequence of return risk. And then I'll come back and tie it into Social Security and show you why this matters and why it needs to be one of your consideration points when deciding how to file. So the sequence of returns risk refers to the risk that an investor faces due to the order and timing of their investment returns. In investing, having years of negative returns are inevitable. It's going to happen. But if these negative years happen early in retirement, it can have a big impact on how long your retirement savings last. Now, if any of you have ever been pitched an annuity, you've probably already seen an illustration like this because the annuity sales industry has been using exaggerated examples of this sequence of returns risk to drive people into their mostly garbage products for years. But let me give you an example of how this works and I'll keep it simple and easy so it won't get all convoluted. Let's say that someone retires with a million dollars and takes a withdrawal of $50,000 in the first year and then adjusts that by 2% each year for inflation. Now, if we base this on a 7% average, life looks great. You're getting your income and you're increasing your income every year. And all the while, the balance of your accounts are increasing. But returns don't happen in a straight line. They are variable. You have good years and bad years. So now let's look at a series of return that over the 30-year period also averages 7%, the same average, except now it has ups and downs factored in. This scenario gets off to a better start and then some negative years drive it down a little and then a long stretch of positive years gets it way higher for several years. And then a stretch of negative years drives it down for the last 10 years. And keep in mind, if you're looking at these returns on paper, this scenario would have reported a 7% average annual return, just like the beautiful straight line that we saw at first. But now let's change things up a little more and assume that in this stretch of 30 years, the first two years of retirement are negative in the market. And by the way, these are the same returns as we used for the last scenario. I just put two negative years at the first and then randomized the rest of them. As you can see, those first two bad years at the beginning damaged the portfolio to the point where it never recovered. And by year 20, there was a $750,000 difference in the portfolio balance. Now, I know this is eye-opening if you've never looked at these numbers this way, but let's add even another layer to it. Let's factor in Social Security where someone was going to retire at 62 and delay filing until 70. This means that the drawdown will be greater in those years from 62 to 70. And as you may have only guessed, it only exacerbates the issue of sequence of returns risk. So let's assume that a couple has an estimated full retirement age benefit of $3,000 for the higher earner and $1,650 
for the spouse. The math here is fairly simple. They know that if they file it for retirement age, 67 in this case, their collective household benefit amount will be $4,650 per month. But if they delay until 70, that will be $5,766 per month. And then back on the other side, if they file at 62, that'll be reduced to $3,255 per month. So for waiting that eight years between age 62 and 70, they would gain $2,500 per month in additional benefits. This is why delaying often looks much better on paper than filing early, especially when you're using straight line returns. For this couple, they needed $84,000 in gross income per year. This would give them the $7,000 per month that they calculated it would take to pay their bills and live the lifestyle they wanted to live. And this was a real case. And let me tell you, for this couple, retiring at 62 was non-negotiable. This was going to happen, period. The only question they had was, should they delay filing for Social Security to age 70 and take the first eight years of distributions from their savings, or should they file at 62 to prevent drawing down the portfolio? Now, they understood that if they delayed Social Security, the distributions from their portfolio in the first eight years would be well in excess of what's typically recommended. But then later, their distribution rate should come down well under what's recommended. At least that was their thought, and they wanted to see how this would work out on paper. So the first thing I showed them was a projection of their retirement income with a 2% inflation rate added in. Then I showed them the same projection, except now it was broken down to show the amount that would come from portfolio withdrawals and from Social Security. This first scenario that we're looking at here is if they file for Social Security at 62, and you could see that part comes from the withdrawals from their portfolio, and that part comes from Social Security. And then I showed them their projected income by source if they delayed filing until 70. So you can see that at age 70, the portfolio distributions dropped drastically because now Social Security was making up a majority of their income. So this is how their income would be structured in these two scenarios. And now that we know this, it's time to test market returns on these scenarios and see how the portfolio balance is held up. So to do the testing for this video, I used a combination of Excel and my financial planning software. And one of the first things I noticed in my expensive software is that the probability of success was better for the scenario where this couple filed at 70. That's really no big surprise. This is almost always the result. And I think that the probability matters certainly as part of the feasibility testing, but you have to understand what goes into that probability to be able to dive deeper. So first, I wanted to see how a straight line average return of 7% would affect their balances. So you could see a nice straight line where filing for benefits at 62 would give a nice smooth ride, gradually increasing every year. Then we have the projection if they filed at 70, and no surprise, right at first their balances decline because they're taking more out of their savings. But sometime in their mid 80s, their balance crosses over and they're slightly more there for the strategy where they would have filed later. But as we've already discussed, Returns don't happen in a straight line. So let's look at what happens to balances if we still use a 7% return average, but we have some high years and low years to get there. And then in addition, to fully examine the sequence of returns risk, let's assume that the first two years are bad. Now, I'm not talking about real bad, just a negative 21% in the first year and a negative 16% next year. I know that sounds bad, and it really is, but we've certainly had worse periods than that. And even last year, 2022, according to Fidelity, the average IRA was down just over 23%. So I certainly think these are realistic numbers to test with. So again, the return numbers that we're showing is where it's down in the first two years. And then after that, it returns to a normal market where it's down in about one out of every four years. But keep in mind, the average is still 7%. So looking at the balance where you filed at 62, you certainly see a decline in your portfolio balance. But since your distributions aren't too high, it pops back up when the market gets back to normal. The portfolio balances for filing at 70, though, is a different story. Because you have those early withdrawals that are large and a down market, it beats it down to a point where not only is recovery very difficult, but now you're down to a level where a shock in the market could result in your savings running out before you die. In fact, in this scenario, if the couple would have increased their monthly income by just $500 per month, 
it would have resulted to them running out of money at age 79. So in my opinion, that's way too close for comfort. And this is the risk of using this strategy. Now, there are some positives here as well. One of the things I like about this is that it gives you income stability later on in life and removes some of the risks associated with managing retirement income. But then some would also say that it makes you dependent on a stream of payments that's outside of your control. And with the funding issue that's facing Social Security, do you really want your retirement income to be subject to the whims of politicians? Now, I know that the academics who write paper on retirement research will almost always tell you that filing later is better. And the truth is, it is often better from only the pure clinical side that examines numbers and makes no provisions for the emotions of retirement. But sometimes the emotional side of retirement planning has to be considered and not just what makes sense on paper. I can tell you this for a fact. Most of the people I work with would be a wreck if they'd spent nearly all of their million dollars in savings just to get a higher Social Security benefit. The truth is, there's a lot of value in smoothing the ride of retirement income. And that's why you need to test these scenarios and understand the data before you make a decision. Or maybe you're already retired and you're delaying Social Security and the market that we had in 2022 is making you wonder if you're making the right moves. Well, if you want to get clarity and feel confident that you are making the right choices about retirement, I want you to get in touch with me and my team. Retirement income planning is what we wake up excited about every morning. My team and I know that a lot of those in my industry are just telling you the results from a software program and don't fully understand the output, how to test all the various factors, but we can help you do that. There's a link down below where you can go directly to my calendar and book a meeting to talk to me or one of the planners on my team. I look forward to seeing you on the schedule.